Hello, my name is Torn, and welcome to Trophy Hunter's review of Trine 2 for the PS3. Alright, so Trine is somewhat of a unique side-scroller puzzle platformer game that's created by Frozen Bite. You'll have the same three characters as you did before, and you're also again going to be allowed to shift between three to solve puzzles. You can also choose to play with up to three people local or online, so that when you play this way, you don't just have to solve the puzzle with one person to get through, you need to make it so all three characters can still make it through. The first character we get introduced to is the wizard Amadeus. This character is your utility character and will be used to solve most of the game's puzzles. The wizard can conjure boxes, planks, to lay on things, or just use them to access hard places. New to this game, the wizard can also do some minor combat. You'll get the ability to levitate monsters, throw them into environmental hazards, or simply just drop a big boulder on them and kill them. Next is Pontius Knight. This character serves primarily as your combat character. Equipped with a sword for quick attacking and a shield for great defense, he can easily cut down any foe in a matter of seconds. You also have a hammer, which does a lot more damage than the sword would, however, without the shield, you have no defense. Pontius can also use his hammer to smash through cracked walls. Also, his shield now plays an element for the water-based puzzles. He can now deflect the water off his shield to help solve the puzzles. Finally in this trio is Zoya, the thief. An entrepreneur. Oh, I'm sorry, an entrepreneur of anything that is shiny. She serves primarily as the platforming character to access high places that other characters cannot. She comes with a grappling hook that can attach to wooden surfaces and arrows to shoot any monsters from range. Trine 2 provides great physics-based puzzles that are not always obvious to solve. This time around, you're going to be working a lot with water and wind. In some sections, you'll need to use the platforms and the environment, or even the knight's shield, in order to get the full of the water moving to where you want. Usually, this is going to be on plants, getting them to grow into bouncy platforms. Wind can be used to levitate platforms, such as the wizard block and planks, or even items in the environment. This can also be used to change the flow of some objects, like bubbles. You also can use a series of pipes to change the direction in which the wind is going to flow to best suit your needs. Also, in some circumstances, get ready to have to actually combine water and wind. This allows you to create bubbles that your group can jump on and float to their destination. The basics of combat in this game is the same as the first one. You can attack things with a knight that's close range, and with the thief you use for long range firing her arrows. However, this time around, you can use the environments to drop bees' nests on the monsters, or even use the wizard's telekinesis ability to throw them into environmental hazards. Trine 2 now also introduces boss battles, or, well, boss puzzles, if you will. The first one you're going to encounter is a large snake that will strike at you if you get close enough. You simply have to use this to your advantage in order to bring the ceiling down on top of him. Visually, this game looks absolutely stunning. It does exactly what it's set it to do. There's no graphical issues, no lag, and the texture quality of everything is amazing. Character models of both the heroes and the villains are greatly updated and look very smooth and detailed. The music gives a very good enchanted feeling of a fantasy world and it really helps to set the mood well. The voice acting again is amazing and really helps give the characters a personality. Since the characters all now know each other, you can see the transition between the first game and the second game as the characters going from strangers to friends. One thing that I found to be a nice added touch was the story was told like a fairy tale. Use an old book style which was used on each loading screen to really demonstrate this. Tron really isn't a story driven game, and honestly you could choose to skip the whole thing and not worry about it due to the nature of the game being so linear. However, personally, I enjoy the story, I enjoy the characters, and I enjoy how the game does try to bring them to life. Overall, if you haven't played Tron 1 and you want a game that's easy to get into and a lot of fun, then go no further. Tron 2 is a cheap game that's well worth the money, it's a lot of fun. Thank you for watching Trophy Hunter's review of Tron 2, and expect to see some tutorials of Tron 2 trophies in the future, and if you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up and subscribe. Also, check out my other videos and email me if you have any suggestions on what I should do next.